This is a Science of Commercials production. The power of radio is not that it speaks to millions, but that it speaks intimately and privately to each one of those millions. This quote by Hallie Flanagan really encapsulates the feeling that radio gives. Flanagan was a producer in theater, and many people would consider radio to be the theater of the mind. My name is Brody Longauger, and I want to take a moment to test this idea. Focus on the sound I'm about to play, close your eyes if you're capable of doing so, and just listen for a moment. As you listen to that, did you picture in your head the setting of that scene? What kind of house were you in? Was it a cabin? What did the fireplace look like? What kind of drink was being poured? And what did the glass look like? These are all things you may have subconsciously created in your mind. Radio is a form of media that has stood the test of time since its creation back in 1895 to when it persevered when television appeared in the late 1920s to its adaptation to the digital world exploding into our lives. Radio is easily accessible and tends to focus more with a local angle. These two aspects make it a perfect breeding ground for advertising. Um, I just want you to know, like, my job is not to explain numbers to people and it's not to get people excited about ratings. I never go there if I don't have to. I tell people and I sell my I sell my stations off of the sexiness of our brands, off of the sexiness of our proposal, of like our contests, off of our anchors, off of the people, you know. David Matthews is an account executive for Bell Media. If you're not certain what an account executive is, think of them as a salesman of sorts, with the added responsibility of growing and maintaining a clientele base. I went into this interview expecting to talk about Numeris, which is an organization that measures Canadian audiences, and we delve into numbers, statistics, and maybe a little bit of history. What I got instead was a man who was very passionate about the brands he was promoting. And instead of a book filled with numbers, he held up a book by Terry O'Reilly. This I Know, Marketing Lessons from Under the Influence. Like it was some sort of broadcaster's Bible. But I very rarely have a new meeting with a client and I'm like, tell me about your business. And then I'm like, okay, let me tell you about this algorithm we got. Ho oh, ho, do I ever got this good rating system? Let's dive into some math. No, never, 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 never. The only time I need to have that equipped for me is when I deal with agencies. That's the only time. I sell air. I don't sell a tangible product, right? So, you know, if I had like a hunk of steel or a bunch of guitars to sell or something, it's a bit different because you can like see it. There's an actual tangible thing there. I literally sell airspace, like nothing. While numbers and statistics have their place and admittedly are useful tools in their own way, Matthew says there's a huge importance on understanding how people are wired, how we think, and getting his clients excited about the creative process. When you wake up, and if whether it's not radio or whether it's, you must have something that you do habitually that's kind of a comfort thing, right? And for a lot of people, it's hearing somebody else's voice when you kind of hear what's going on in the world. Television is a shotgun approach. You're talking to everybody all the time. That's how we market it. Radio is pinpoint accurate. It's a lot more hyper-local. Um, it's theater of the mind. Radio is theater of the mind. It's, uh, you, you can do anything that you want on radio, whereas television has limitations because of the visual. 
As we spoke, I knew I needed to approach someone who knew all about the creative process. I had this solid image shaped for me by Matthews on how to hook an audience and hooking clientele willing to advertise. I would never have thought that basic psychology, communication, and station branding would be the main tools in the belt of an account executive. So I was curious to delve deeper into the process of making radio commercials to see what the creative process would surprise me with. I got in contact with a creative writer for Rogers, Juka Drieger, and we talked about the process of making something that sounds good, but also fits the vision of the client. So, it, yeah, it really depends on, um, on who they are, usually how long we've worked together. And also, some people are just picky. Like to me, it's all just words, but there's a thousand ways to say one thing in the English language. Drieger says you have to know a little about everything to be a creative writer, but by no means are you a master. Having a client describe to you what makes their particular business important is a staple in finding the middle ground. I always say, you're the professional in your line of work, and I'm the professional in mine. And it's my job to make what you do make sense to anyone. I don't know much about cars, but I know how to, I know how to put together an ad to sell one, if that makes sense. I don't know much about landscaping, but I can write an ad that tells the general public why they would go with this company. So it's kind of my job to be like that middleman and find the language to explain to other people what you do. Drieger says she looks for something she calls the why factor. Why would somebody choose one business over another if they sell a similar product? She says every business has one, but they just need to find it to make it stand out on radio. Typically, clients will give you a lot of uh, <laughs> information that they think is important, but to a radio listener isn't. Like, we've been in the business for 10 years. We've got great staff, we're committed to quality. And I usually counter with, well, no one is going to tell you the opposite. No one's going to say, well, we haven't been around long, and our people are kind of shit, and uh, we don't guarantee much. We're not very professional. No one's going to tell you that because everyone wants to give you the best possible image. Staying away from the mundane and typical is the key. Drieger says she goes through a list of other questions to create this image, as well as what she would stay away from. Um, being a creative writer, it sounds like a very colorful box of crayon kind of job. But it's kind of, it's a... Uh, a mixture of both left and right brain because there's the creative side of my brain that has to make these magical ads and then there's the other part of my brain that ha is has to do more or less data entry. Drieger says she uses a system called White Orbit which helps organize clients and make sure ads play at the correct times. She says organization is probably the most important tool within her arsenal. Her creativeness might be very important, but overall her organization runs the show. Radio commercials are the amalgamations of an eclectic group of people, all utilizing a varying range of tools to create something so simple, yet so much more complex. This journey showed me there was much more under the surface of when it came to radio. And I think this quote that I'll leave you with from bassist and Grammy winner Esperanza Spalding really summarizes what the main message I learned from this was. The benefit of radio is, something beyond your realm of knowledge can surprise you, can enter your realm of knowledge.